This evening uh, we had the pleasure to host in this interview series uh, Vittorio Colau. Vittorio Colau is uh, a loyal member of the Bocconi community. He sits uh, also in the board of the International Advisory Council and is here this evening to meet uh, a group of our MBA students. The topic, as you know, Vittorio, because you are a loyal member of this series, is leadership. And so I would like to start my uh, first question for you exactly on this topic. The problem that I see in uh, recent times is that the economic situation, the macroeconomic perspectives are becoming a little bit more uncertain. And uh, the pace at which the change takes place is becoming more and more rapid. This obviously poses some challenges to the managerial profession. How do you see the effect of complexity and the, rep the speed of change on uh, the managerial profession from your particular perspective of a multinational corporation? Well, I would say that there's no doubt that uh, not only, as you said correctly, the speed is accelerating, but also you have shifts in directions. So what was uh, okay or even maybe mainstream I don't know, one year ago, one year and a half ago, suddenly changes completely and it becomes non-acceptable or non-advisable. So, uh, and this is because of the external environment, this is because of technological change, this is because of social and political change, so there's many drivers for this. How does this impact management? Well, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I think uh, we are back in a phase where integrating uh, different skills and different uh, uh, experiences and visions of the world again is very important the ability to kind of see the other side of the story if you look at all the problems that for example the big over-the-top players are having now I mean Google and you know it's not just a bit fake news or taxes of these things again suddenly they went from being you know the loved uh, companies by everybody in the world to be, you know, front page, you know, as if they did something very bad, which I think is an exaggeration. So uh, you need to really have your people and your managers capable of thinking from all possible angles and kind of seeing the other side or the least likely scenario and then say, okay, it's least likely, but if it happens, what do I do? It's in a way more interesting, I would say. It's also less specialistic and more humanistic. <laughs> This is one of the points uh, that you frequently stress in these meetings with our MBAs. The fact that you must be, let me say, mentally resilient in order to uh, pose yourself vis-a-vis -vis others that reason in a different way than yours. And uh, of course, these kind of uh, soft skills uh, probably are becoming more prominent at a certain part of your career rather than in the very early part of your career where probably the I use the probably wrong term, hard skills, contents, are probably more important. I know that you have uh, your sort of theory regarding the evolution of the leadership from the beginning of the career of a manager down to the end. Can you tell me a little bit, how is your perspective in this kind of balancement in between contents, hard skills and soft skills? It's almost uh, uh, bi-dimensional. In a way, you have a, let me say, a seasoning factor. I don't want to call it aging, but, you know, seasoning factor that uh, uh, allows you to evolve from uh, the early phase of your career when you really know it better, you know all the details, you really, you know, you know how things should be and how you, you really want the world to be, to a phase where actually others know that, but you are probably more ambitious in giving targets or you have more vision because you have already integrated a little bit of skills to probably a more seasoned phase where the real secret of leadership is integrating and orchestrating everybody else. And, and of course when you are uh, in my position the last role is very important. Uh, I just did a transaction, a big transaction uh, in, uh, in India a couple of weeks ago uh, everybody had an important input, input in that. Of course, it was financially very complicated, but there were a lot of other aspects that needed to be integrated, and some of them very soft. Uh, you know, a big multinational doing a joint venture with a family and, you know, all the kind of 
it was very important for every member of the team, also the intermediate, but also the junior ones, to express where they could see angles, either threats or opportunities, in order to get uh, to a constructive solution. My job was to listen, orchestrate, make sure that everybody had his own kind of moment for expressing. So it's not just uh, seasoning, but it's also having all the right voices around the table, which is very important. And Vittorio, you were mentioning the recent deal that you did in India, and I take the opportunity to talk about this. India is a culture which is completely different from ours, for example. And uh, you are sitting on top of a multinational group where there are a lot of different cultural perspectives that you have to face. Um, I would like to hear a little bit uh, your point of view regarding differences in cultures. And so working in multicultural environments, as you know, our class of MBAs uh, is typically represented by a number of countries. We are representing 29 countries. And so people in this course also uh, learn how to manage the different cultures that probably in the future they will face in their profession. Uh, so, your perspective as a CEO of, uh, of course, a multinational uh, company scattered all around the world, uh, how do you manage the ability to give, and this I know is a, an element that you take in great consideration, the different cultures, giving them peer dignity when you have to deal with yeah. the day-by-day -day uh, business. You, uh, you I think out. this is a very important point because, and, and on this one I, I've always been a little bit heretical, I never believed that uh, in the definition of a global company. I never believed I uh, in globalism. I don't think anybody is global. I think we are all, at the same time, local, because we belong to a culture, to a system, to a certain background. But we also like to relate to other cultures. So what we did at Vodafone was to say, Vodafone is an international company with shared values. So the values are very important and they are shared and they have to be shared, but local roots. And therefore, we want to integrate and respect all cultures. I'll give you a small example. Uh, you know, we have a number of colleagues who are uh, Muslim, Muslims, and uh, uh, we have our yearly management meeting. And with Ramadan moving during the year, now Ramadan has come exactly in the period of the meeting. Now, how many are there that they really want to fast uh, during uh, this meeting? Probably not more than 10 out of 220. Nonetheless, we don't serve dinner out of respect for them to anybody until they can eat, so that we can all start eating together. It's a small thing, but it gives a signal. Now, of course, we don't do meetings on Christmas. We write emails, writing Happy Diwali. So rather than going the thing that I don't like, which says season's greeting at the end <laughs> of the year, which I think season's for what? Winter's greetings? I prefer to say Happy Diwali, Happy Ramadan, Happy Christmas, Happy everything. So, so to give the exact everybody perspective. Everybody has the same perspective and the same right. And actually, it's very interesting because you learn from the others. You learn different cultures. You talk to each other. I'm in Africa next week. I'm going to a country where I've never been. I'm very happy to hear how things are there. Now, the key point is, however, having very strong common values. So do not mm. accept discrimination. We don't accept discrimination, whether it's age, gender, sexual orientation, whatever. We say, this is Vodafone, Vodafone is the same for everybody, whether you're black, white, what religion, LGBT, whatever. Exactly. We don't make any... Now, those values are non-negotiable. If you don't like those, I'm sorry, you know, you better work somewhere else. But having said that, all differences are welcome. Yes, and so you are pointing on the fact that there are universal values that make the ground for yeah. the diversity in cultures. This is what I'm going to say to the MBAs in half an hour. I'm going to say you really can integrate everybody if there is a common understanding of what's the purpose of the company and the values of the company. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, there's a lot of things that can be very different. And it's actually very interesting to have different and you know, diversity among your colleagues, much better than having the monoculture yes. of the global company that behaves Exactly it could be probably same. also a little bit more boring. I oh, think. it is more boring, there's no <laughs> doubt. Excellent. Vittorio Colau, thanks very much. Thank you.